Veterans Day, flags are raised on front porches. Parades weave their way down main streets. Speeches are given on town squares. We tell our veterans how grateful we are for their service and their sacrifice. And then we go back to our lives. And these men and women who served with a courage we can barely imagine, in places we can barely conceive, go back to theirs. Four years ago, a pact was renewed that honoring their service shouldn't be about a single day, but a single purpose. Not about a national holiday, but a national commitment to honor that sacred trust we forge with every man and woman who chooses to put their lives on the line to defend this country. The willingness with which our young people are likely to serve in any war, no matter how justified, shall be directly proportional to how they perceive the veterans of earlier wars were treated and appreciated by their nation. That was said by our first Commander-in-Chief, George Washington. This is what they carried on patrol in Iraq. Dog tags. A five-pound Kevlar helmet. An M4 carbine. And these are the things they carry, too. You think about home all the time. Um, it's certainly better than thinking about the mud wall hut that you're living in. When they said that they were going to get us home from Iraq, you know, it was like, well, it's a campaign promise. It's like, just never going to happen. As your Commander-in-Chief, and on behalf of a grateful nation, I'm proud to finally say these two words, and I know your families agree. Welcome home. I remember I just ran up to him and jumped into his arms. <laughs> I'll be grateful to the president for getting us out of Iraq with honor and dignity for the rest of my life. We made that promise to go take care of the enemy and defeat the enemy. We did. President Obama made a promise to bring us home honorably, and he did. We had these matchbooks that when we were on patrol in Afghanistan, we handed out, and on the front of the matchbook was a picture of Osama bin Laden. It was unbelievable. My goodness, we may actually have found him. He said, well, I have overwhelming faith in our special forces. I'm confident even if he's not there, they'll be able to get in and out. And so I trust them. I trust their judgment. I trust their capacity. This was a very difficult mission. It was something that the military unit involved rehearsed repeatedly. He said, go. Tonight, I can report to the American people and to the world that the United States has conducted an operation that killed Osama bin Laden, the leader of Al-Qaeda. I remember hearing something and it finally registered that it was actually singing. And when I stopped and I listened, it was Americans who would spontaneously gathered across the street from the White House and they were singing the national anthem. I'm kind of basked in it all by myself, thinking about the guys that, that I'd served with, the guys we'd lost, the guys that had made it happen. Previous employer, America. Job description, devastating Al-Qaeda, securing Afghanistan, stabilizing Iraq, taking out Osama bin Laden. Skills, leading, serving, sacrificing. Promotions, many. References, the President of the United States. I believe that no one who fights for this country should ever have to fight for a job when they come home. The administration has implemented several tax incentives for companies to hire veterans. Their dedication is second to none. They're focused on teamwork. They understand mission. And they'll see through things through to the end. I always feel like they're telling me I can't do something when I used to lead like 50 guys. You know, now they're telling me, oh, I'm giving you two people. You know, is that okay? Can you handle that? Anything you're going to throw at them as an employer is nothing compared to what they faced before. The unemployment rate among younger veterans has fallen uh, quite significantly. We've met the enemy. We can meet a deadline. Sound of a helicopter will trigger it. A certain sound of an explosion will bring you up short for a second. So yeah, I you know I think about it 
One of the definitions of a veteran is somebody who at some point in their life uh, wrote a blank check to the United States of America up to and including their own lives. In Afghanistan and then Iraq, we all saw the people having to honor those checks. Standing up for our veterans, this is not a Democratic responsibility, it's not a Republican responsibility. It's an American responsibility. It's so much easier to get whatever it is that you need help and to be seen sooner because there have been more people that have been hired to help those of us in need. I think a lot of wounded warriors are reluctant to reach out, but the current administration has really been reaching out to us. A lot of the programs that they've instituted within the last four years um, have really been aimed at strengthening military families. The real sacrifice uh, is made by the people who didn't come back who won't ever come back. Remember how I cheered like crazy at your first little league game, even when you struck out four times. I thought you'd tell me not to come anymore, but you didn't. Remember when I made you take your sister to her first dance? I thought you'd hate me forever for that, but you didn't. Remember when you were too old to kiss goodnight anymore, but I walked into your room one night and tried anyway. I thought you'd push me away, but you didn't. There were so many things I wanted to thank you for when you came home, but you didn't. You came home and sometimes were denigrated and you should have been celebrated. It was a national shame. It should have never happened. That's why here today we resolve that it will not happen again. When uh, President Obama spoke at the Vietnam Memorial, we were finally welcomed home. They come from every corner of the country. They leave their husbands and wives, their homes and their lives. And they say, if you want to hurt the United States, you have to get through us. They stand up for freedom when they barely have the strength. And they don't stand down till the job is done. Four years ago, a pact was made to keep faith with those who keep watch. That our nation's commitment wouldn't end with a tour of duty. They deserve nothing less. They've earned far more.